Um, we, uh, yeah, we have to talk about it because you just opened the can of worms that is Bridgerton. Um, I don't think can of worms no. is... I don't think it's a controversial no, subject. No, no, but the can, no, because yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a can yeah. that I was willing to yeah. open later in the conversation. Yeah. I was going to get to it. Yeah. I was going to do two pies can of worms was and the, then Bridgerton. Can of, can of, can of worms was the original title yeah. of Squid Game. Mm. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but man, we have to say, man, what a congratulations Fantastic. on yeah. a success. It, it's, it is, I mean, How do you it's, it, I got told it was like Downton with dicks, <laughs> right? Not meaning the people, but everyone was shagging. <laughs> and my wife watched it, uh, Michelle, and just said, I'm addicted to this Bridgerton. And every time I walked in the room, some, someone was shagging. And I was like, there's nothing like Downton. <laughs> but, but it's just, the success is... Humongous! It's just massive. Like the dicks. I, I was. I mean, how was that for you? I mean, well, when we when we did it, we finished filming just before the start of the pandemic, and then when it came out, we were in lockdown. So the experience of 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 you know seeing how it was received was all done online. Mm which was extraordinary. And I also think that part of its success was because most of the world was in lockdown it's and so we were just weirdly. craving a bit of colour and a yeah. bit of joy. And, you know, I think, you know, crime shows and yeah. thrillers were yeah. sort of yeah. ratings sort of weird, dropped around weirdly landed time. In, in your, like, timing-wise. I mean, yeah, and it was never Christmas wished Day. it on anyone, but what a, wow. what a sort of bizarrely fortunate time. I'm, look, I don't doubt it would have been a huge success anyway, but I, it can't have hurt that every, it was like, you finished it just before lockdown and everyone was locked down. And it's like, right, here you go, guys. Here's a bit of fun for you. And I was like, I need this so much. <laughs> did you know, so, did, when you read it, did you, did you go, this is going to be massive? Well, with Shonda Rhimes as well. There's and you, certain... Well, because it was Shonda Rhimes, there was a sense of, and it was an American production, you know, over here. There was a sense, obviously, and you knew it was all lavish and big, you know, that you, you had a sense it was going to be quite big, not huge, but you, you know, you just thought. Was it a big budget on it? Yeah. I mm. mean, it was each episode's, I think, the budget of a of a feature film. Oh, wow. My God. Wow. wow. And yeah, I mean, was it hard work? No. Like shoot. Was oh, it I not? mean, not for me. <laughs> not for me. No. I mean, it didn't really. It's dead help. easy. No. Um, <laughs> So you got a sense of that, especially when you'd go for costume fittings and there would just be warehouses and warehouses mm, and every wow. costume oh was made from scratch, which you don't <gasps> normally have in period dramas. No. They're normally really? rented. So they don't just rent them out? Wow. Handmade each one. And some cost some characters, you know, have, have about 100 costumes. Oh. How much did you love it? You were the costumier, right? Yeah. How, much, yeah. how much did you love that? I mean... Mm. Look, for anyone listening, you can't see Catherine. She's turned up like an absolute fashionista looking absolute oh, outfit bless on you. point. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, uh, me, Susan and Will have just worn basically matching the outfits. Same, yeah. The same outfit. <laughs> yeah. Jeans and a top, Catherine what more looks, do you need? Catherine looks like haute couture, fabulous yeah. fashion. Um, I, I guess, is was this a part that you were always like, oh, I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know me, I do love a period drama. Mm -hmm. So for me... The, the you know being brown and being able to be in a period drama and so not true. be a slave yeah. and wear nice costumes was just I, I you know unbelievable yeah of course that for a start and the writing and then obviously yeah you know playing somebody that made all these fantastic clothes and and had a you know was quite duplicitous mm -hmm. was uh, and so yeah. so I guess you were like. Right, you need to get measured, and these are the designs for your costumes. This is how it's going to look. And then they went away and created them all from scratch. And you must have been like, "This is what I live for. <laughs> this, finally, this is what I live for." Because you know what? Everything I've ever been on, I was thinking about this. Every job I've ever been on is the kind of job that your agent calls you and goes, "Here's the good news. They really want you now. They don't have a huge amount of money. <laughs> and it's yes, not, every it's job not necessarily now. even like what they what what my agent's talking about. What my Wages might be, it's just generally the whole thing. I don't think I've ever worked on anything that could reasonably be called a, a, a truly like big budget or even particularly comfortable budget uh, show. But you, you know, Bridgerton is yeah. and was. And so was there a huge difference? Did you, what, what, yeah, what was lunch like? Yeah, what, <laughs> yeah. what time? Yeah, yeah. what yeah, was lunch like? Was, a, a, a you have, you'll know because you know plenty of people who've worked in the States. Pe people listening won't know that there's a thing in the States that they don't have here called craft services, which is this mythical, um, like, nirvana that sounds like it's the most amazing thing. And what that is, is on the English shows, 
or British shows, you uh, turn up, you get served breakfast, you do your morning's work, you go and you have lunch, there's a couple of options, and bless them, they, they cook it in a tiny little um, caravan usually, a trailer usually, and then you, you do your afternoon's work and you go home. In America, you arrive, and there's this spread, and if you didn't fancy any of it, then at any time during the day, if you've got a couple of minutes, you go to craft services and go, you couldn't whip me up an omelette, could you? Actually, I fancy that steak. And like, it's, it's just absolutely, it's just like having a Michelin-starred chef on hand at any time you want. Please tell me I had craft services on Bridgerton. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. it. But I, I, I did an American job recently where that was even one step further. That was literally like, you know, I'm obsessed with, you know, I've, nutrition and, mm -hmm. and, you know, specific snacks, you know, like seaweed or whatever it is that yeah. you won't get yeah. on a normal set here. Yeah. And that production literally had everything that you can really? think of from a health food shop to every dietary requirement. But yeah, they, this they, we're well catered for. <clears throat> Yeah. Can I ask before because I, I want to know about what that project did. But, but when you did, um, when you when you cast, when you were casting for Bridgerton, when you yeah. got the casting, um, what was that process like? Like going in for the for the role, getting the role, all that. I mean, because you know what it's like when you want something. I just want to say this: um, two years before I got the job, I did some New Year wishes, all right? And it's a thing called. Um, my boyfriend did with me like um, a walk of once where you walk around on New Year's Eve and you walk as if you're walking into the future saying right. this is what's ha happening as it's as you wish it to be yeah. and in the walk of once I was saying oh I'm so happy and grateful that I've got this um, hit Netflix show that's American shooting over here and is a period drama and that was two years before <gasps> So you, so you just sort of you just wish that onto yourself. Well, but I don't being. know. I mean, is it a coincidence? But I'd like to say well, it's quite on point. It was very on point, especially I, and I said, you know, well written and. If only you'd have gone drum. playing a character called Madame Delacroix, then that would have clinched it. There's never, never been no doubt whatsoever. Yes. You fully psychic. That's never going to happen. But so when I did get the script come through and the meeting, I was like, oh my god, I want this. I just felt even before I'd read the script. Because they didn't give us the whole scripts. Yeah. They just gave us, Page. like, sides from, like, you guys probably have had yeah. the same. Mm. Sometimes they reveal. They'll send you one episode, They give you a character they? breakdown. Yeah, and sometimes they don't give you any episodes and they just give you the character and then, you know, a scene from a couple of episodes. It's hard, isn't it? Because you've got a pitch and you don't know how you're going to pitch. Is it, are you in the right on it or are you going too far this way? And sometimes you don't get many goals. At it. Did you go into the room or was you just self-tape? So went into the room and met the showrunner and Kelly Valentine Hendry, and um, one of the Shondaland producers, Betsy Beers, and they were so lovely. And But I just worked my ass off for that one, because I just think when you really want something, you put the extra work in, don't 100%. you? You know those ones that you half do, because you just say, I'm not going to get Fail that. to prepare, prepare to fail. It's yeah. something I go by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Always. And it's just, it's what light sets your heart on fire, I think. Because you can work hard on something and you just know deep and you go, and you go I'm not going to get that one. They'll mm. probably think I did well, but I'm not going to get it. Whereas I was like, I think I'm going to get this one. <laughs> 